God, that game was painful. The Suns reverted back to the 2019 Suns. It was a big throwback game for the Suns in Game 3 of the playoffs. And you can't do that when you're playing LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Uh, the Suns were absolutely terrible. Uh, there's no amount of stuff you can blame on Chris Paul being injured. I mean, if he's playing, the Suns probably win the series if he's playing well. But, yeah, it, 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 you have to blame. You have to talk about so much with the Suns and how much they messed up during this game. It's why I'm so disappointed in the Suns for losing Game 2. Because then you turn around and have an even worse game in Game 3. Like, that's, that's why I'm mad about losing Game 2. Especially when you're in a series against LeBron James. You can't have games like this. It's just, you're not a playoff team if you have games like this. And they have one last chance to prove me wrong. Because you're not coming back down from 3-1 to LeBron James. You have to win game four or this series is over. And the Suns really have to step up. They really have to bring the energy. They have to bring the intensity. And by God, stop giving Devin Booker the ball every single possession because it doesn't work. And actually run an offense and get shots and not just drive Devin Booker into a wall. You know, just do something that works, please. And yeah, this is something I said. And this is what I said in my videos. You have to concentrate everything into offensive scheming. And it kind of worked in that first quarter, but it also kind of worked because Chris Paul played seven good minutes. And then they played solid after the Chris Paul minutes. But after that, the offense absolutely fell apart. They had 12 points in the third quarter. They had like, I think around maybe less than 20 in the third quarter. I'm going to have to double check, but they were just horrendous in the second and third quarter. And the fourth quarter got bailed out by Cameron Payne Heroics. Yet again, actually... I do want to give a lot of credit to Campaign, but he's only been good in the fourth quarter. Like, <laughs> I do want to give him credit for being good in the fourth quarter, but he hasn't been good except for the fourth quarter. It does make, make him the second best player on this team, but he hasn't been good except for the fourth quarter. And we need him to be better than that, and I think he needs to be starting going into game number four. Just you saw how much they could shy away from Chris Paul because he's just not shooting the basketball. Like, you can just totally stay away from him. You don't have to worry about guarding him. That's an issue. Uh, that shouldn't be too complicated to understand. Uh, you can't do that. You need to have... Um, you need to have shooters on the court. And same thing with Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder cannot be out there. I understand he's good defensively, especially against AD. But you're going to have to live with Cam Johnson. Please, you need Cam Johnson in there. The spacing is just so terrible, and, you know, AD's still playing really well without it. And also, DeAndre Aiden, he's doing a lot of great things, but, um, he needs to be better defensively. You know, the Lakers are going to be attacking the basket now that they've got their mojo back. LeBron actually driving to the rim. That's another reason why you can't drop game two, is because then LeBron figures out how he can be the best player in the NBA and drive to the rim. That's why you can't lose game two, or, and then turn around and lose game three, and I'm going to keep saying this, the Lakers have not been good good this series, the Suns have just been really much, much worse, and the Suns have to make a statement, and um, I, I guess you got to come out right away, put an early run on them, get them on their heels, if you come out and you're scrapping and you're talking and you're being emotional, you're going to lose the game. You're going to lose. You, you have to make an immediate statement that you're a playoff team that deserves to be here. And that you, there's a reason that the Suns have made it this far and that they're the second seed. Because there's a lot of people doubting it on the internet right now. But it's not just about those people on the internet, because they don't matter actually. But it's about you gotta just win just the last few minutes of that game uh with the chris paul or sorry not chris paul devin booker with that flagrant two foul was it a flagrant two foul no did devin booker deserve to be ejected yes because that was a stupid foul and he did it out of desperation because his team has been so bad and he's been terrible and he did it because he's i don't know just in a bad mood because the lakers are talking and the fans are going wild. Like, you gotta have a more level head. 
but I can also understand where he's coming from here. It's a, that's a, I would not want to be in that situation. I could not deal with that situation. But yeah, that was a, that was a tacky foul. Uh, he should not have done that, even though uh, Mikhail Bridges was being pushed by LeBron in a very similar way earlier this game with no foul call at all. Uh, you know, midair push, no foul call. And I think that should have been probably a flagrant too. Also, AD kicking Jay Crowder in the nuts was a worse foul than that. And uh, also Dennis Schroeder just punching uh, Devin Booker in the nuts in that same play. Uh, you can argue those should have all been flagrant twos, but they just weren't called. And that's just how it goes with the Lakers. I guess we're talking about no calls. Don't blame the game on the refs. But Chris Paul was absolutely allowed to be beat up in this game. It even felt like they were abusing Scott Foster's power as, you know, just his supreme bias against Chris Paul at some points during this game. Like, they were intentionally... No, they just shoved Chris Paul to the ground every single opportunity they could get. Like, dude, Chris Paul was on the floor so many times, and it wasn't even because he was flopping. I think he flopped, like, probably once the entire game. Everything else, the Lakers intentionally, like, went over and shoved him to the ground, trying to re-injure him. And he did get injured, because he got kneed in the nuts. And that's, that's not the re- The reason he went out wasn't because of his shoulder, it was because he got, you know, he's hurting. And I just can't understand how the NBA argues that they, they're trying to quote-unquote protect the players when Chris Paul's allowed to be beaten up like this. Like, this wasn't protecting your players. Especially a really, you know, a very popular player that a lot of people watch, and he makes the series more enjoyable. You're not protecting him. If you're not protecting him, who are you protecting? Well, LeBron James and the entire Lakers roster. But other than that, you're not protecting anyone. And I think the NBA has really failed there. If they've, if if there's nothing else to argue for in terms of the refing this game, you just want to ignore everything else. It should be. How the NBA are not protecting their players uh, with this game, and especially a very, very important player in Chris Paul. I guess another thing I, I can't understand: J- uh, Javon Carter playing zero minutes this game. Uh, this season, when we've plugged him in, he's consistently brought energy, defense, intensity. He raises the morale of the team, and he's consistently broken these three-point shooting slumps the Suns have had. I really can't understand why he's a DNP in this game. There were so many times I thought he should have been plugged into the game during the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter. Uh, I just can't understand why he's not in the game, but Devin Booker committing offensive fouls, committing flagrant fouls is in the game, and just missing a lot of shots in general. I understand the offense is based around Chris Paul and Devin Booker, but if you took those players off of the court, could it finally return to form? That's another important thing for the Suns going to Game 4 is to remember how to play offense, especially since Chris Paul is probably still going to be playing limited minutes. Remember how to play offense. Get your elbow jumpers. Set the, set the elbow screens. Use the elbow action. Run your off-ball movements for your shooters. Get players open. They did it well in the first quarter, and it fell apart immediately in the second quarter. It's just Devin Booker trying to do everything on his own, and it didn't work. And you got to go back to your off-ball movements. Players got to hit shots. Um, every single player on the Suns team are good at hitting threes. Have they done it at all this season? They haven't been good this season. I'll admit that. But you got to step it up in the playoffs, man. You're going to lose the series if you're not hitting shots. And they, they didn't really hit shots last night. Uh, other than Cameron Payne really didn't hit threes. Uh, Jay Crowder needs to be on the bench. He's just... I did solid on the defensive end, but I just don't think there's an, enough of a difference that you can't argue. Just Cam Johnson's the better player right there. If he's going to hit the threes, he's going to do a solid enough job that Jay Crowder isn't much of an improvement defensively. But I mean, you still got Jay on the bench. If you put Chris Paul on the bench, that's a great weapon right there. And I understand you have to switch up all your rotations, but you've already been switching up your rotations if Chris Paul has been pulled out of these games. Just just do it just make your edits just do it and figure out how to play offensively as i said this should have been their only focus game going to game three 
They didn't. They bet on Chris Paul being healthy. They were dead wrong. They got seven minutes, seven good minutes of Chris Paul, and then it was all downhill. And I'm really angry at Monty Williams for those the two things. Not putting in Javon Carter and not figuring out how to play offense without uh, Chris Paul. It was just kind of disgusting. And yeah, I, that's just not good basketball. I guess the final thing... There's got someone's got to have to bring the energy and the intensity. You can't get involved with the Lakers antics. It doesn't matter how noisy that crowd is or how much LeBron wants you to, you know, pay attention to him. You got to block it out or you're losing the series. I thought this was a focus of the team, but it hasn't really been that clear, especially after game three. You got to block it out. You can't pay attention to it. You can't pay attention to the refs, no matter how bad they are. They've been terrible all three games of the series. You've got to block that out because every single game you've had an opportunity of winning, despite these referees. That should be pretty clear. You can win these games without the referees and it, without the referees on your side. You just got to play harder, man. You got to be better. This has not been a playoff team at all. They haven't played like a playoff team. If they're playing like a playoff team, they're playing like a seven or an eight seed not like a, the number two seed in the Western Conference, the second best record in the NBA. This is a great team for a reason. There's a reason that we believed in them to to beat this Lakers team, to quote-unquote upset this Lakers team. They can beat them even without Chris Paul. Uh, I mean, if Chris Paul is here and they're missing all these shots, but Chris Paul is healthy, I think they still win the series, actually pretty handily. But with Chris Paul not there, everyone has to step up. And... You, you've got to step up, man. This The Suns team can win the series even with Chris Paul injured. It's just a question of if they will. And I just don't know at this point. Uh, you've got to play harder. You just, you've got to make threes. And you just got to play harder. I'm going to keep saying that. You've got to try harder. They, they just kind of rolled over at the end. I never had faith that the Suns were going to come back in this game, even though, you know, the score got closer. It wasn't, it's the same thing happened in game two. You just can't play with this type of energy, this type of intensity, just lack thereof. And, you know, this type of body language. You don't win games like this. And it's, it's just disheartening. But I'm giving, I'm putting my faith into this team. And it's going to be the last time I put my faith into this team this series if they lose it. Because, uh, yeah, if, if they lose this game, the series is over. Just period. I mean, maybe LeBron James will decide to rest Game 5 so they can win it at home in Game 6. But, yeah, the series is over um, if, if the Suns lose Game 4. You can't come back from down 3-1 to the Lakers. It's just not going to happen. They're the defending champions, and they also have LeBron James. It's just not possible. You have to win Game 4. Game 4 is a must-win for the Suns. And I will lose faith if they come out and they're despondent and they're playing into the Lakers' antics. I will turn tail and I will not, you know, really be paying attention to the game because there's no point. It's... You have to be better. If the Suns... I'm just really worried after seeing Devin Booker getting that flagrant 2 foul... And then followed up by Chris Paul commenting, and I think this is just incited by a reporter's question about Scott Foster and how he, now he's lost 11 straight playoff games refed by Scott Foster. I'm assuming he's just responding to a comment, but like, you can't be blaming it on Scott Foster. Bro, that's just so unprofessional, especially coming out of one of the most professional players in the league and Chris Paul. You can't be doing that. Just some final notes. Uh, as I said, you got to start a campaign, Cam Johnson, I think. And Torrey Craig needs more minutes. As as Monty said, he stepped up in the role he was given, and he needs to play more. Javon Carter needs to be on the court. Frank Kaminsky wasn't all too terrible, but you just want more DeAndre Aiden. It's just just pales in comparison to DeAndre Aiden. Frank Kaminsky was better than Sarge, uh, as I predicted going into the series. I said Kaminsky comes in at game three and isn't bad, and he's going to play more minutes than Sarch at the end of the day in the series. But, um, yeah, uh, Kaminsky wasn't terrible, but it's Frank Kaminsky. Like, it's worse than DeAndre Aiden. 
you've got to figure out this rotation. It's not a rotation at this point. You got to figure out what you're doing. This is all you need to focus on. This is the only thing you can focus on. How do you win game four? It has to be everything. And if the Suns aren't up to it, I just don't know what to say. I don't know why I've made videos about them, uh, like pretty much every other day, for the last like nine months. I'm not sure why I have if they lose this game, and if they come out and they're t just terrible and they're despondent, because uh, I've certainly wasted my time if they do. I'm not gonna lie, they they have to play well, because <sighs> Suns gotta step up. I know some teams are doomed to fail in the playoffs, but this is not one of them. You have to step up, man. You gotta step up. We saw what happened in game one. Suns were actually good. Devin Booker balled out. Bring it back. You need it. Anyways, that's it. Uh, maybe hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.